A good Monday morning to you. It is Mock Draft Monday here on Fantasy Football Academy 2020. As always, I am the Dean of the Academy. Hey, guys, how y'all doing? Hope you had an awesome weekend. I uh, had plenty of time to, you know, get out and do whatever you wanted to do. I hope you were as careful and masked up if you're in areas that require a mask. Uh, remember, we're looking out for each other. We're trying to help each other and, and be as healthy and self-conscious as possible in this time in this world that we're living in. And I want to ask you guys today, what is your favorite game time food? Um, I'm going to throw up some suggestions. If you guys have anything that I don't hit on, leave a comment down at the bottom. And hey, while you're down there, go ahead and subscribe, like, and share for me. Help out, this, help out the channel. Help. Let's get the message out of the academy that we're trusting our gut when we're doing our mock drafts, okay? So what's your favorite food? We got wings, pizza, nachos, burgers, and hot dogs. So if there's something I didn't touch on, let me know and let me know what you want to see me fix my own special recipe. You know, for those of you who don't know, yes, I do more than just fantasy football. I'm actually a chef by trade. Uh, been in the restaurant industry for about 30 years which is almost as long as I've been playing fantasy football. So with that said, down to the bottom, leave comment, like, share, subscribe for me. And uh, we can't, I can't wait to get, get a hold of some recipes and we're gonna do a special uh, game day edition for, uh, for whatever recipe you wanna see. Uh, I got an awesome recipe for a homemade barbecue sauce. Uh, we're gonna do toss those, toss those with some wings. Uh, you want to see some homemade pizza. We got some uh, personal pita, I call them pita pizzas, uh, made with the, the pita bread. Uh, we're gonna show you some nachos, show you some burgers, show you how we do the, the meat mixture uh, and the hot dogs. Hey, whatever you want to throw on, just let me know down the bottom and uh, you know we'll get a little conversation and get started here. So let me know which fave is. And uh, as we get into this mock draft Monday, we're talking today, we're going to throw a term out there that I haven't used before. Uh, I think I might have used it once with, uh, with, Chet, with uh, Professor Chet, but uh, it's positional advantage players, okay? It's not something you hear a lot, but it's something that whether you know it or not, you're targeting certain players, okay? These are guys who are going to give you a self-explanatory positional advantage at their at their position okay so we're talking guys like Lamar Jackson like Pat Mahomes um, things like that that you're gonna have to reach for in your mock drafts uh, here's also what I want to know today what software are you using for your draft where's your draft how many people are in it and where are you gonna hold it now I normally would hold it at Buffalo Wild Wings um, because they've been good to me over the years. Uh, I, I've loved being there. Uh, this year, we're skipping that because we have a sponsor of the show. Uh, shout out to Zia of Lafayette uh, down on Ducey Road in Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, they've been kind enough to uh, agree to sponsor the draft this year, sponsor of the show. Uh, they're going to hook us up, get us our own little private room in the back, and uh, we're just going to have a good time and, and do, some, do some drafting. So we're going to meet up, have a live draft. If you guys have a live draft, let me know where it's going to be. If you're going to do a Zoom, like what I'm doing right now, if you're going to do a Zoom meeting uh, and do a Zoom draft, you're going to do an online draft, let me know what's going on and uh, how you like to draft. Okay, let me know. Kind of help me better put, put out better content for you guys and maybe, uh, you know, customize it a little bit more for you. Uh, also, what software do you use? What site are you using? Um, I myself use the NFL fantasy app and we run off of that. Some guys use ESPN, some guys use CBS Sports. Let me know what you've used in the past, what you like, what you don't like, uh, things like that. Uh, as I've said before, the software for the NFL has allowed me to, as a commissioner, sorry, to, uh, to put two uh, reserve spots, injured reserve spots just for the COVID um, I went ahead and made that adjustment when I created my league this year. So that's something that is, it's something that I suggest that you look at or that you at least bring up to your commissioner, uh, how you guys are going to handle 
this whole COVID situation with this year. Uh, there's also been talk about what happens, and we got to play the what if game. I hate doing it. I don't like playing the what if game, but this, the times in which we live, we got to do it. Uh, what if the season gets canceled? What if we get halfway through and things just get shut down? Uh, what are you going to do then? There's been some leagues where I've heard that they're going to use week eight as their their goal. Like if they get to week eight and then week nine is canceled and the rest of the season has gone, then whoever is leading in week eight, uh, they're going to declare them the winner. Uh, now, some of this might have to do with the next year uh, draft position. Uh, some leagues, they the winner gets the first pick or they get to set the dra the draft picks or things like that. So uh, however your league goes, talk with your commissioner, talk with your league mates, your, your fellow team owners, and see what's going to happen if these things happen, okay? So things to think about. Now, as we get into positional advantage players here, uh, which is today's topic, and we're going to go through a mock draft. We're going to go through a 12-team uh, draft at the two position. I'm going to show you guys how to get these, these positional advantage players and what happens when you have to reach for these guys, okay? Yes, it's going to give you advantage at that position, but at what cost, okay? Because there's going to be a cost for everything. There's going to be a cost for you reaching for a guy that you normally wouldn't reach for, uh, like a Lamar Jackson, like a Pat Mahomes. Uh, if you have – now, the running backs – you're only getting the positional advantage running backs if you have the first three or four picks, one through three or one through four, okay? These are the only times that you're going to be able to get these running backs. The wide receivers, on the other hand, you might have to reach for a few guys. You're definitely going to have to reach for the tight ends. And then after that, there's really no positional advantage for a defense or a kicker. So uh, with that said, I'm a, I've already labeled or listed my QBs and my running backs. Saquon, CMC, and Zeke, those are your positional advantage running backs. Your wide receivers that I have on my list, and you guys know I'm not a big list guy, but for the purposes of this episode, we're going to make a list. Uh, Michael Thomas, DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, and Julio Jones. I kind of struggle with putting Julio on there because he's not really big on touchdowns, but his PPR uh, advantage is astronomically high. Uh, he gets a lot of volume. He gets a lot of uh, a lot of touches, a lot of targets. He just doesn't get a lot of touchdowns. So, if you're in a PPR, Julio Jones is definitely somebody that you want to target, and you want to you have to target early. Okay, you might. Sorry, I have a little runny nose this morning. I did my morning run and uh, worked out everything. So, um, but like I said, if you want Julio, you're going to have to reach for him. Um, you're, you might have, you have to take him uh, first round if you want to if you want to get him if you have him on if you're on the back end of the first round front end of the second if you want to risk it and you get down to the twelfth spot nobody's picked him up you can take whatever running back you want to take at the, at the twelve and then on the way back around the first pick the second round you can take Julio because you're going to have a long wait in between uh, tight ends. And here's the thing. If you take a running back, let's say you're 12. Let's say the scenario I, I put out there just played out. You are the 12 spot and you take Julio or you take a running back with the 12 and you come back around and you take Julio. I will seriously doubt that you're going to get Kelsey or Kittle at that spot. Now, I put Andrews on here just for the simple fact that he is pretty much Lamar's favorite target when it comes to passes, okay? He's got an astronomically high PPR for a tight end, okay? That's what puts him up there in the Kelsey Kittle range, but that's it, okay? So if you're not playing PPR, don't worry about it. Um, I, I think that it, you can go further down and be able to get someone who's going to be as – as or close to as productive as Andrews is, okay? Um, a dark horse that I see coming out is uh, David Njoku if he goes to the right team. Now, he's asked for a trade from Cleveland. Don't blame him. 
I would too, especially after they bring in Hooper. And they brought Austin Hooper from Atlanta. They put him in. They gave him a buttload of money, the most of any tight end in the country, in the, in the NFL. He's the highest paid guy. Why, I don't know. It's Cleveland. Who knows why they do what they do, but they did it. Uh, it kind of hurt Njoku's feelings, so he got butthurt, asked for a, a trade. Uh, there's rumors that he's going to – he wants to go to New England. Of course, everybody knows that they love pulling off trades, and they love they have enough draft capital to where they can afford to lose a few draft picks. They always stockpile. So, with that said, let's go ahead and get into – uh today's mock draft and like i said we're doing a 12 team draft from the two position uh snake draft of course basic pick logic standard scoring uh 15 rounds six bench spots quarterback two running backs two wide receivers a flex which is wide receiver or running back defense and kicker let's go ahead down here and of course as always no time on the clock because I'm trying to give you guys as much information as I can. And we've already mentioned it one time, but we'll mention it again because we love these guys. This is Zia of Lafayette in Lafayette, Louisiana, uh, down on Duce Road, in between, right behind the movie theater on Ambassador Caffrey, or I'm sorry, on Johnson Street and Red's Gym on Duce Road. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, surprisingly, Saquon is first off the board. Okay, so Saquon's first off the board. You guys know normally it's going to be CMC. So, but CMC, I'm taking Saquon. Since it was Saquon, of course, I'm taking CMC. Now, I had some, I did a mock draft earlier, and I had a guy ask me, who would you take number one if you had the, the first overall pick? And I told him Saquon. Everyone else that was live in the draft said – they, that they would take uh, Christian McCaffrey. And I pointed out the fact that McCaffrey's got a new head coach, a new quarterback, and a new OC. So we don't really know what we're getting. Um, now, that would lead you to believe that I would go ahead and pick Zeke. Of course, you guys know I'm not picking any Cowboy. And the next guy up is Derrick Henry. Uh, as much as I love Derrick Henry, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to pass up what CMC could be okay so we'll take CMC and we got to wait a really long time before we get another shot and we're going to see some of these guys go off you see Julio uh, Lamar already went and uh, Lamar went right before us we already lost out on Kittle and uh, we lost out on Mahomes as well so none of these guys that we were going to try to reach for actually wound up falling to us okay so we see down here Julio is gone Devontae Adams is gone Michael Thomas is gone okay so those are all of your top wide receivers um, that you're going to reach on Galladay was gone early Aaron Jones is gone uh, and the two quarterbacks that we would have reached for are gone this is why I'm telling you guys, you've got to be, a, be willing to reach on these guys. Um, so with that said, uh, let's look at our cheat sheets and see what we've got here. So there's really nobody else that's going to give you a positional advantage that I would see taking in round two. Okay. Uh, so we're going to, we would fall back at this point into our traditional picks, pick logic here. Okay. So if we look at the tier three running backs and who you would take in tier three, uh, you would, there's King and Drake uh, who's going to, he can possibly have a lot of targets. We're not really sure what's going to happen there. Austin Eckler. I like Eckler's uh, environment around him because regardless of what happens with the QB, the offense is going to be running through Eckler. Okay. Uh, Todd Gurley, 
I don't like Gurley this early. It's way too early for, for Gurley. And Chris Carson, the, the hip injury for the way that he runs, I don't like. Okay, and then, of course, there's nobody in Tier 4 that I'm going to promote that early. So let's look down at wide receiver. Um, again, the Mike Evans, Chris Godwin thing. You, I've been over it before, guys. I'm not going to be taking – Godwin or Evans because it's going to be it's either going to be a split or it's going to be a crapshoot on whichever day uh, Brady who whoever Brady wants to target that day okay whoever's open and we're not really sure what's going to happen in in Tampa and I would rather have someone else do a wait and see approach okay so that said let's go up here let's look at a running back we've already got CMC Okay, so we've got a good, solid number one. I'll go ahead and let's take Awesome Eckler. You guys know I love me some Austin Eckler. So we'll take him with the second overall. And we're on the short turn. So there was only one other guy with two picks that's going to take somebody. And he went ahead and took, as obviously, Mike Evans and Kenyon Drake. Those are the highest ranked guys. Now, this is where you get into reaching for a player at a positional advantage. Okay. So we're going to look at tight end. And as I said at the top of the show, Mark Andrews is basically putting up numbers like a wide receiver, okay? Um, he's going to give you a positional advantage, and the wide receiving core is so deep that you can pick somebody else at that spot, at a wide receiver spot later in the draft and get similar value, but you're not going to have anybody coming close to what Mark Andrews has the potential to give you, okay? Okay especially since they're talking about trying to pass more and balls more this year. Um, and of course I wouldn't take Ertz uh, just for the simple reason that the only way, only reason that he, uh, that he did anything last year was through injury. There was the wide receiving core in Philly was decimated and it was him and Dallas Goddard. Goddard's still there. Ertz is still there and everyone's coming back healthy. So unless you're waiting for the fantasy guys to just reach down and obliterate the wide receiving core yet again in Philly, Zachers is not going to give you what you're looking for, okay? It's the only reason that he's that high. So let's go ahead. And for the purposes of this show only, I want to make that clear. For the purposes of this show only, I will reach on Mark Andrews, okay? And we're going to see all the guys that we're missing now. I've said it before that Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is way going way too early for the position that he is in. Okay. Um, now, the one good thing I do like seeing is I do like seeing David Montgomery fall to me. Um, let's look at our draft board. And we see a plethora of wide receivers gone. Okay. So, like I said, this is the one thing that you want to do when you're at the turn. You want to be proactive and not reactive to runs. So when you are reactive to runs, you're getting the leftovers. You're getting guys who you normally wouldn't have touched or you wouldn't have thought about. Uh, we lost out on Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, Juju, Cooper Cup, A.J. Brown, Adam Thielen, all phenomenal uh, wide receivers. I'm not sad about losing out on Amari or Odell because I don't believe in either one of them. Um, I don't, I'm not sad about losing out on James Conner. That's way too early for him in the third round. Uh, if he falls to the fifth, okay, I'll consider it because I should at that point already have at least two of my running backs already locked up. Um, I, I do miss the David Johnson pick and the Leonard Fournette pick. If I could have gone back and not reached on Andrews, if you don't reach on, on Andrews and you go 
running back heavy. You go the robust RB strategy where you knock out all your RBs early and then you take whatever's left over for wide receiver. Then I'm taking either Fournette or DJ. I'm probably leaning more toward DJ because he's, I think he has more opportunities for touches in Houston. Um, the only thing that scares me is the fact that they did get rid of D hop and they brought in two guys uh, and they have Fuller that they brought in or that they are bringing back. Uh, he's always injured though. And then they brought in uh, cooks, Brandon cooks from uh, the Rams and everybody's all going gaga about him. I'm laying off of cooks. I'm not touching him. The guy's one hit away from a concussion and being out of the league entirely. Okay. Um, but that's the only thing that would scare me about DJ, but I, I love the fact that um, how much opportunity he has in the 250 plus <laughs> touches that have been vacated by Carlos Hyde going to Seattle. Okay. Um, and that's another reason why I'm not saddled missing out on Chris Carson. I'm not touching Melvin Gordon. That's way too high for him to go in the third. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is going to have to go through Marlon Mack. It's going to be a running back by committee until one of them decides that they want to step up and take that job full time or the coaching staff feels like Taylor is just that much better than Mack and puts him in full time. Okay. Uh, but it's going to take at least three, maybe four weeks to figure that out because there is no preseason this year. Uh, Mark Ingram, same thing. He's got J.K. Dobbins sitting behind him. And I'm not going to touch anybody who has a stud running back backup that they spent high draft capital on because it just scares me way too much. And I know we don't draft scared, but that unknown is way too big this early in the draft, okay? Uh, I like the Allen Robinson um, there. Uh, we missed out on him as well. Uh, but I wouldn't have picked him third anyway. I would have probably taken, if I was going to take a wide receiver at that point, it more than likely would have been Calvin Ridley. And we see we miss out on a lot of running backs here as well. Uh, I'm not going to touch the left bell. The only two that I really miss out on is David Johnson, Leonard Fournette. Those are the guys that I would have targeted at that point. So let's check out our cheat sheets for our third overall pick. And I like the David Montgomery pick for our next one. And it's going to be a while until we see it. Oh, I'm sorry, we're on the short term. My bad. <laughs> so we take the uh, we take the David Montgomery and we go on the short term and we don't lose a whole lot here. So let's pick it up and see who we missed out on. Cortland Sutherland, Raheem Mostert. I'm not sweating losing these guys. Uh, just for the simple fact that Cortland Sutton – the only reason that he was anything last year was because of Joey Flacco. Uh, he really didn't do a whole lot after that fact. And we see down here, now we're on the short turn. So I will tell you right now that I'm looking at DK Metcalf and Terry McLaurin. Now between these two, if those are my choices and I've got a long wait time between picks, which I do now because we're, we just finished on the short turn, and we have to wait a long time to get back to us. I'm going to take the guaranteed number one here, somebody who's not going to be sharing any kind of touches with anybody who's threatening him at all, the scary Terry McLaurin from Washington, okay? And we see all these other wide receivers going off the board. You see a couple of uh, tight ends gone as well. And let's look up here and see who left when. We see Zach Ertz left. I've already mentioned about, about him. I'm not touching him because of the Dallas Goddard and um, that timeshare. Darren Waller, the walrus in, uh, in the desert uh, with the Raiders. I don't know what – we don't know what's going to – what's happening with him. He's, he could – is he a flash in the pan? Is it something that they're going to stick with? We don't know. Evan Ingram, way too injury prone. And Hunter Henry – Who's throwing him the ball? Okay, let's get real. The Number one, he gets hurt all the time. He hasn't stayed healthy in his entire career. And then we see all of these uh, quarterbacks going off the board here in the sixth round. 
So here's what I want to do is for the purposes of this one, we're going to undo up to our Terry McLaurin pick. And I want to show you guys just for this per for these purposes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to reach. And it's not that big of a reach as you guys saw these quarterbacks going off in the sixth. Okay. But this is early, early in the fifth. This is the second overall pick in the fifth round. Okay. So we look here and we go, Mr. Reliability, Russell Wilson. Okay. Now, if you're going to reach for somebody, reach for somebody who's dependable. Don't reach for somebody who you just have a, a feeling on that you hope is going to blow up. Okay. If you're going to do that, then you don't take Russell Wilson. You go down here and you take Kyler Murray, who his ceiling can be through the roof. Okay. So with that being said, let's go ahead and we'll take Russell, Mr. Reliability. And I mentioned on the episode with, uh, with Chet that if you take Russell, you know what you're getting. You know that you're going to have a solid quarterback who is basically as close as you can get to a lock in fantasy football. Um, and if you didn't see it go off the board, our pick, original pick for the fifth was Terry McLaurin. He's gone. T.Y. is gone. D.K. was right after Russell. Now, we saw Debo leave, and we saw Ky we see Kyler, Matt Ryan, and, and Deshaun Watson all off the board as well. Um, the only guy in the tier, same tier, is Josh Allen, and I'm not touching Allen for anything. Uh, we don't – he's extremely inaccurate, even though he has – a new toy in Stefan Diggs. Diggs is a deep man, and this is a run first offense. Okay. They went out and got Zach Moss, high draft capital. They're going to need to use them. They're going to need to see what they have to back up Singletary or even take over for Devin Singletary in Baltimore or in, Baltimore, in Buffalo. Uh, I got bees on the brain. Uh, but we're going to see, let's see. Uh, Robert Woods gone, Devontae Parker. Uh, let's check out our cheat sheets and see who we have because we need a wide receiver. And this is where reaching for guys causes you to draft in desperation later on. We haven't taken a wide receiver in the draft. Okay, so we've got three running backs. We've got our tight end locked up and we got our, our quarterback locked up. And we're waiting until the sixth round to get our first wide receiver. And who are we left with? We're left with basically backups except for AJ Green, um, Hollywood Brown in Baltimore, but we don't know. We already got pretty much, we pretty much got Baltimore's number one receiver in Mark Andrews. Um, Brandon Cooks and Will Fuller, same team, Splitting time. We don't know who's going to be the, the favorite there. And Marvin Jones, who is backing up Kenny Galladay. Now, if I'm going to pick anybody out of this, that's going to be a safe first, first pick. It's going to be Jarvis Landry. We already see that he outperformed last year uh, Odell. So I'm happy with that. Now, if we're going to go for a second guy, if you're looking ceiling, A.J. Green has a very high ceiling because, in my personal opinion, when your first round overall pick, Joe Burrow, specifically asked that A.J. Green get signed and they franchise him, give him a one-year prove-it franchise tag, okay? He signed it. He's coming back. Supposedly, he's healthy but we're not going to see anything until he steps on the field week one. You're going to be able to see him in camp, but how much do you really get to see in camp? But A.J. Green's ability and talent and opportunity is going to be there. But 
are you willing to risk your second wide receiver being a huge injury risk? If you are, go ahead with A.J. Green. If you're not, then you slide down here to Marvin Jones and you take Marvin Jones. And we're going to see down here, his 2019 stats, man had nine touchdowns, 779 yards, okay? He had 91 targets, 62 receptions, okay? That was without Matthew Stafford for a good portion of the year, okay? So the safer pick is going to be Marvin Jones. And, of course, we're going to lose out on A.J. Green. We're going to lose out on Akers. I love uh, I love Akers. And let's go back and check the draft board and see who else we've missed out on, okay? So we made the Marvin Jones pick, and right after that, Marlon Mack is gone. And Mack, as I've said before, is way too much of a time, time split between Jonathan Taylor. But you're talking a fourth round for a backup and a seventh round for a vet, which shows you that basically everybody's banking on Jonathan Taylor to take this job, okay, which I don't doubt. But are you willing to risk the first three, maybe four weeks to sit, either sit this guy on your bench or not get out of him the capital that you're putting in, okay? Um, Cam Akers, I'm loving, I love the Cam Akers, and I'm sorry we missed out on him. Um, but we're pretty much looking wide receivers here, and you see right now, as far as the running backs go, we've got our three, so we really don't need – anybody unless somebody pops up that we just can't pass up on now i see alexander madison you guys know i love him as an insurance policy against alvin cook um but let's see what we've got down here for wide receivers so eighth round and this guy right here is basically your number one on this team okay and that's julian edelman Okay, Edelman last year, seven touchdowns, over a thousand yards reception, receiving 153 total targets and 100 receptions. Okay, he played all 16 games, and yes, he's getting up there in age, but when he is it on your receiving core, then yeah, he's going to get that. Nobody else stepped up, but he had Tom Brady throwing him the ball, and you know that Tom Brady loves Julian Edelman, he loves his slot guys a la Wes Welker when he was there with New England. Um, so taking a shot this late, this is basically your first bench spot that you're taking. Uh, and then we're going to see who else has fallen to us. I love me some DeAndre Johnson this year, or I'm sorry, Deontay Johnson this year. So we'll take him and we're going to lose out on Emmanuel Sanders on this round. But is Emmanuel Sanders really going to be anything for you right now? Okay, don't know. Um, now, we did see a rookie go off the board in Jerry Judy right before our pick and C.D. Lamb. Now, I've had people ask me before, who are you taking? What wide receiver would you take out of the studs that got taken as far as rookies? I don't like the Jerry – I don't like Jerry Judy as much as I like Justin Jefferson in Minnesota. I think he has a better quarterback and a better situation where he doesn't have to be the guy, okay? Jerry Judy might not have to be the guy because of Cortland Sutton, but is Cortland Sutton really on the same level as Adam Thielen? I don't think so. I don't think he's been in long enough to establish himself like that. And C.D. Lamb is coming into a place where you got Michael Gallup, and Amari Cooper, who were already cemented. They already have chemistry with, uh, with Dak. And he's going to be a, a squeaky third wheel, if anything. Emmanuel Sanders, he's coming in to take the pressure off of Michael Thomas. And he's probably – he's a good option, but I'm not going to take him. Obviously, I'm not taking him over Deontay Johnson. I like Deontay Johnson's situation better than I do Emmanuel Sanders. 
simply because I don't see Juju losing the double team and Big Ben's back. So Big Ben has been able to support multiple thousand yard receiving uh, wide receivers in multiple seasons. He did it with, with AB and Juju. He can do it with Juju and Deontay. Okay. So now we see Sam Fran going off the board in the 10th round guys. Please don't do it. It's way too early. Um, now, we are going to go down here, and we're going to see who we have left for defense since we're bringing it up. Now, San Fran is the first defense off the board, but we've seen them get torched before in the regular season where they had to score 30, 40 points in order to win. Okay, that's not even going to get you any points. What we haven't seen is Baltimore's defense get stretched like that. So, 10th round, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and we'll see who we have for running backs. And we saw Madison's gone. Uh, I'm not worried about losing him because of, we locked up our wide our, uh, running backs. At this point in time, if you're going to take somebody at a running back, because we've taken so many wide receivers before, we got to snag somebody. So let's take A.J. Dillon just because of all the turmoil that's happening in Green Bay. And let's go down here. See who we have. We see Justin Jefferson. So let's go ahead, take him, and we'll lock up and reach on that. And let's see who goes off the board now. Okay, so we see the Ravens and the Bills. Let's go back and we'll undo this pick. Look at our draft board. So we made the Dylan pick. And since we're reaching for uh, positional advantage, not much of a positional advantage in defenses, but since we're doing a reach episode, let's go ahead and reach on the Ravens. And somebody might say, hey, why aren't you reaching on the Steelers? They're ranked higher. Yeah, they're ranked higher, but they also have Big Ben, who even though he can throw four touchdowns in a game, he can also throw five interceptions in the same game because he will zone in on Juju on his main receiver and try to force it in there. Plus the fact he ain't that fast. So he can give up a lot of sacks as well. He, he will take a sack, okay? So we see the draft board and we see that we lost out on Justin Jefferson, just the pick before us. So this is one of the things you're either going to have a guy who can give you a very high ceiling early in his career or a Baltimore Ravens team who you're going to lock in and you're not going to have to stream a defense. So what do you want to do? What is your gut reaction on this? Leave a comment below, subscribe, like, and share down bottom while you're there and let me know what you would have done in that situation, okay? So let's look at the cheat sheet. And if we're looking, this is one thing about reaching, guys, is that all of this stuff right here, you don't have to worry about a tight end because you've already got one, and there's no reason to get two, okay? Um, if we look up at our running backs, Antonio Gibson, everyone is has been talking about. There's a lot of guys in the backfield for Washington. Um, and for those of you who are wondering, no, I don't like the fact that they're going underneath the Washington football team this year. I think it's ridiculous. Um, they could have come up with a better name than that to go on. But that's me. I'm not making the decisions, unfortunately. Um, so right here if you're going to pick a good safety net carlos hyde i don't think you can really get better than that just for the simple fact that carlos hyde is used to be a workhorse running back he had 250 plus target or uh, attempts last year with houston he's going to get the ball once 
Chris Carson gets dinged up. He's able to carry that load, okay? So insurance policy, since we missed out on Alexander Madison, go ahead and we'll take Carlos Hyde. And yeah, Carlos Hyde sucks, but he's in a really good situation if he does get some action. And you're in a really good situation if you get him this late. So we look at the draft board and we get him in the 12th. Um, and this is the other thing about you've already, you've already got your, your quarterback locked up. So you don't have to worry about that. And we see all these quarterbacks are gone in the sixth and seventh round. Um, guys that you can actually trust. Okay. Um, Matt Ryan, uh, Kyler Murray, I've said his ceiling can be astronomical. The only guy in this list that I really wouldn't trust because of injury is Carson Wentz. Um, and you come down here and you don't see another quarterback go off until, just make sure, we see Stafford off the board as well. Stafford is a fabulous, phenomenal uh, fantasy quarterback. Um, I, I'm surprised to see him go that early. Uh, and then the same team picked up uh, Tom Brady. So I really don't understand that there, but they're hedging their bets, I guess. Daniel Jones and Josh Allen, that is not a, a, a quarterback combo that I want to see on my team. Uh, and then Mayfield and Wentz. Wentz could get knocked out and Mayfield could get the hook. So you're left without a quarterback right there. Not really that smart, but this is a computer picking and they're going off of the, the algorithms. So let's look at our roster. See what we got going on here. So we see McCaffrey, Eckler, and David Montgomery as our running backs. Russell Wilson as a quarterback. Landry and Jones, I'm not too comfortable with that as a wide receiving core. Come down here and we see Edelman, Deontay Johnson, A.J. Dillon, Carlos Hyde. We're pretty much uh, safe on our bench spots, uh, but we've got nothing but backups with the exception of Edelman, okay? Um, and who knows, Edelman can wind up as a backup to Nikhil Harry after everything is said and done. So, Let's see what we have down here. And as I mentioned him, he's still here. Let's go ahead and, and look at, well, I'll tell you what. Let's go with Curtis Samuel. There's been a lot of talk that he wants to, they want to run the offense through Curtis Samuel. My only reservation about Samuel, Samuel is the fact that they brought in um, Robbie Anderson. Sorry, I had a brain fart. I knew he was coming from the Jets. Couldn't remember who he was. But Robbie Anderson from the Jets, they brought him in. Um, let's go down here and see. We got Nikhil Harry. He made it around to us. We'll take him. And we see a couple, we see a kicker go off the board. Let's uh, check our board here. We see Will Lutz is gone. Buckner, Tucker. Um, and let's go back and I'll tell you what, we'll undo this one. And we'll undo the Curtis Samuel pick. Let's check our cheat sheets and go down since we're reaching. And uh, this is something that we normally don't do, but this right here, you can either take Tucker or Buck or uh, Bucker uh, with KC. Who's going to score more points, Baltimore or KC? It's tossing in the air. It's going to come down pretty much equal. We'll reach on Tucker. We see him gone, we see Buckner gone. Noah Fant we see gone. Let's check out our draft board. 
Hayden Hurst gone. I like Hurst in Atlanta. I think he's, I think there could be something there. Um, there's a lot of targets that were vacated by uh, Austin Hooper when he, when he left. Let's check out the cheat sheet. And these are our last two picks. So who do we have? The guys who we passed on are still here. So let's go ahead and we'll take Curtis Samuel. And our last pick, let's just check and see who we have at running back. Really no one of consequence that we're not going to be missing. That probably won't be there even with it. And let's look at backup quarterback, okay? We look at some big names on here, okay? And we see Gesicki and uh, Hawkinson still there for tight end along with Jack Doyle. Now, Jack Doyle could be a very deep uh, sleeper for a tight end, so keep an eye on him on your waiver wire because he's probably not going to get drafted, okay? Uh, but last pick of the draft, it's not bad to pick this guy up. Go ahead and take Cam Newton, and we see all the kickers and tight ends gone. We see an A minus. I've said before, don't really look at that too much just for a simple fact that it can be manipulated. We did reach on a bunch of these guys. So that could be one of the reasons why we got so high of a grade. But look at our lineup. Could we have gotten better receivers? Yes. Could we have gotten a quarterback that was similar to? Yeah, we could have waited and we could have got Matt Stafford because with us not to, with us taking Wilson, that took him out. Who was going to be picked ahead of Stafford? What uh, Russell Wilson was. So if we look back, let's look back and see. And we see Stafford as the last pick here in that round. So let's just say, for sake of argument that we don't take Russell Wilson, everything else falls the same. We wind up taking DK Metcalf. And then Stafford's still going to be there for us later in the, in the draft. So we could have jumped up and we could have taken him instead of AJ Dillon in the 10th round, still gotten a good quality quarterback. So all in all, let me ask you this. With the team that we just drafted, how comfortable are you being the second draft overall and winding up with that kind of wide receiving core? We could have done better, okay? We could have, without reaching, we could have done better, okay? That's why reaching can bite you in the butt later on, okay? Is it worth it for one or two guys? Maybe. Okay, but it depends on who those guys are. I would have much I would have much rather been comfortable reaching with Lamar Jackson and reaching with Pat Mahomes or reaching with Kelsey or Kittle than reaching for Mark Andrews. Okay. I would have been more comfortable not reaching for uh, Russell Wilson. Okay, even though I love Russell and he's a phenomenal quarterback, I can still get better production later on. Okay, so what did this prove? Trust your gut. Reach when you can, but be smart about it. Okay, guys? Draft strong. That's going to be a hashtag for us. Dra hashtag draft strong. So we want to see positional advantage players come to us, but more than likely, you're going to have to reach for them. Okay, guys? I hope this helped you out a little bit. I hope this showed you what to and not to do in your draft. Uh, if you want, if you want that big name, you're going to be chasing it and you're going to have to reach for it. Okay. So draft smart, draft strong, trust your gut. And as always, I've been the Dean and this has been fantasy football Academy 2020. Remember to subscribe, like, and share, and we'll see you next time for team build Tuesday. Take it easy guys.